Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com where I teach musicianship skills on the guitar so we can express ourselves more freely. In this video, we're gonna talk about improvising over a portion of a very classic jazz chord progression. It's often thought of as the rhythm changes and it's just four chords of it. The one chord, the six chord, the two chord, and the five chord, one, six, two, five. And each of those chords are gonna be taking up just two beats. And we're not gonna be playing it super fast or anything, but when a chord is only taking up two beats at a time, it moves along really quickly. And if you've seen any of my other lessons about improvisation, you maybe know that I'm very, very into mapping out chord tones and improvising with chord tones. And we're gonna talk about that in this lesson, but we're also gonna talk about how do you handle chords moving along so fast? Do you really need to target them and outline them? And the answer is definitely not, but outlining them at, gets it, our mind, our musical, our internal ear, and our, our body kind of used to what the harmony is actually doing, so we can play very, very freely and target things only if and when we want to. The main thing we're gonna talk about here is something called prolongation, which is this practice, this harmonic practice of taking any one type of harmony and saying, how can we stay on that harmony for a long time and still let it be a little bit interesting? Like it's actually doing something, but we're really just wanting to stay on that harmony. That's a big part of what we're gonna be talking about here. And I'll kind of foreshadow it a little bit, which is the that this one, six, two, five is kind of a way of just having one, having just one chord. So we're gonna improvise over this in a number of ways. I have a bunch of tips for you. We're gonna start a loop of this chord progression, D major seven, B minor seven, E minor seven and A seven. I'm gonna do it in kind of a walking bass line fashion. If you're interested in that technique, I have a mini series about playing walking bass lines with chords. There's a link in the description if you wanna check that out. But we're gonna play over this and I'm gonna give you a bunch of steps for how to practice mapping out playing over this. Some of it zooming really into the details and some of it zooming out and playing much more broadly, trying to make music with it, trying to play with phrasing. Uh, so let's jump into the guitar view and we'll get started. So first let's make sure we have a loop of this D major seven, B minor seven, E minor seven, A seven with this walking bass line style. So I have a loop of that. And again, if you wanna learn about that, check the link in the description. We're not talking about that technique right now. We're gonna to to talk about improvising over it. So I'm gonna start that loop and we're gonna go through these multiple steps. Okay, we have our loop going. It's very similar to a video I did recently doing the same process with triad, like simple pop song, rock song chord progressions. Check that out if you want to. There's a link in the description. We're doing this more in a jazz context this time, but you don't have to play jazz over this. You'll see how we're just talking about how to make sense of playing over seventh chords. And we're gonna do a series of steps here the first one being that we want to treat the entire thing as the tonic, as the D major, okay? So whether that's chord tones, if I play D major seven chord tones, you'll see we have a few ways to make sure we know what we're doing throughout it, but just treat it as the tonic if that's the scale. A lot of what I'm doing is making sure that I am kind of landing on the chord, a chord tone or even the root of the first chord when that first chord comes back around. But we'll talk about more of that, about that in a second. But just make sure you can play D major pentatonic if you want. It works really well to just think of it as the tonic, the whole entire thing. More on that soon, because that's really this prolongation concept that we're gonna talk about and play in different ways. Let's do step number two, where now you really wanna know where beat one of the progression is and you wanna target it. So I already said that I was doing that a little bit, but now we wanna do it very much on purpose because that step one, if you're just playing scales, it might sound like this. You could just play, 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 and it's like, well, where is that sitting with the overall progression? So you want to be hearing when that first chord comes around. Here comes the first chord. You want to target the root of it or a chord tone of it. Really just know where that is. You just need to know your body needs to feel where that is. There's that beginning. Okay, every time. See, so 
See how it's really targeting the beginning of the phrase? Okay, so that time I played through it and played a few of them and then landed on it after playing a couple phrases. That's a great way to do it, too. You can cause some tension by playing a ton as long as you land at some point. Notice what I did. I landed right on that D note when the D chord came back around. So if that's hard for you, great, let it be hard. But you have to know, you have to know when the beginning of that progression comes back around, okay? Let's go to step number three. Step number three is adding tension before that resolution. So we're thinking of that landing point as resolution. So play anything with the D major pentatonic scale, D major blues scale, D major uh, just regular diatonic scale. Target at the beginning of the progression like we were doing, but now add tension, just some chromatic notes or something before landing on that. So there's the beginning of it. I just added a chromatic note walking up to it. You can add that, that tension anywhere. <laughs> I actually got off of it that time, so that's why it's good practice. Um, I was feeling that by doing so many chromatics, I was feeling it in the wrong place, and that's gonna happen. So uh, be used to that happening and then saying, well, what did I do wrong? Why didn't I hear it, right? Right, just adding some, some weirdness to add tension to it, okay? Let's go to number four. Now, this is where my process for outlining chord tones comes in handy. This is what I say is the, the kind of be all end all of knowing where we are in improvisation. And the point of it is to be able to target chord tones if and when we want to, not all the time, but let's outline them. So you're playing just chord tones. D major, B minor, E minor, A7. So I'm trying to play musical with it as well, just chord tones. Check out my chord tone videos. I'll put a playlist of my chord tone lessons, chord tone improvisation lessons in the description. Do check that out if you need to work on that because it has really from the ground up ways to work on it. But let's just play with chord tones a little more because it's, it's the thing you'll spend the most time on. And this is totally like you want to learn it and forget it, right? This is the thing where you want to know it so well that then later you just play and you're not think, you don't have to think of chord tones. You just will land on them here and there when you want to hear it. Okay, so chord tones, chord tones, chord tones, chord tones. You want to know that really well. Again, spend weeks, spend months on it. If you need to go slow, go out of time. Now, let's go to the next step. Now, after all of that, you want to just focus on knowing where you are. We did this already with knowing where you are at the beginning of the progression, but now you want to know what chord you're on at all times. Play anything. Don't worry about how you sound and just be aware of, I'm on that one quarter. There's the two chord, there's the five chord, there's the one, there's six. Just hearing it and feeling it. And I like to just play anything. Six, two, five. You just want to have a sense of. It's hard to demonstrate that I'm sensing it, but I'm really thinking of six chord, two chord, five chord, and you know, really feeling it. And the only way I can do that is because I worked on chord tones a bunch. So that's how I feel it. And then this is what we're trying to do is internalize that and then choose to not target them if we don't want to. Let's move on to the most powerful concept here, which is the prolongation. So prolongation is where this whole progression is just a way of extending one, which is why we can just play D major on it. You could play D major the whole time as we did in step one. Right, it totally works because it's a way of playing one. But now let's do it 
in different ways, prolonging that the first two chords will treat as one and the second two chords will treat as five. So now we have this progression, five and one and five and one. Okay, so now you're gonna outline just chord tones if you want to, to get used to it, but really playing around with that. So here's one, one, and then five. easier and I'm doing only chord tones there and that's what I do to make sure I know it really well now I'll just play with it out not only playing chord tones but still thinking of one and five went into just playing only D there, you, the kind of pentatonic scale, just because that's where I wanted to, it, it just happened, right? I was trying to control it, but I just was inspired to do that. And that's okay, the music in the end is gonna go that way. When I'm practicing, I'm trying to have parameters, I'm trying to have control, and when I'm playing, I'm trying to do none of that, okay? Super, super hardcore training for, you know, did I, did I do exactly what I said I was gonna do in terms of targeting this, thinking of this, doing, you know, having rules, and then for true, true playing, really just let all that go, right? And that's where a lot of this comes from. When I'm just kind of doing that chromatic stuff. That's just because I know I can play anything I want. And when I'm ready to, I can land on exactly a spot of a chord tone outlining something, kind of like what you heard me do right there. Another way you can do this is you can treat the first two chords as six and the second two chords as two or really anything you want. So we could think of this as B minor, B minor, and then E minor. Let's try it. really well my ear still took me to like the major root instead of this as the root but that's okay but I was thinking of it as B minor E minor I was really playing around with those and the only way I can know that I'm playing around with them is that I exclusively practice chord tones a bunch and then I let go of that so I'm driving that point home two more steps for you okay let's take this prolongation concept to an extreme we know we can play all one over the whole thing well we could also play all five over the whole thing you could really do obviously anything you want as long as it at some point comes back to concluding an idea that's the game that's the name of the game like create a story create a path create the tension and then resolve it tension can be from playing something even consonant note wise but repeating creating energy because this creates tension it's like when are they gonna stop doing it right so tension isn't always just dissonant notes right tension and release can be all kinds of things for this one let's play four cycles of this as the one chord treating the whole thing as just d like we did step one and then four cycles of it as the five chord <laughs> that's very interesting now we're like saying it's this one huge what is it gonna be it's gonna be eight measures of one eight measures of five even though the bass player is going you know the piano player whatever this progression underneath is this very specific uh one six two five we can be really really loose with it okay so here's the one one just one let's go to five now Still five. Now I did half of what I said just because that's what felt right. So I did um, two, ti two times of the progression as one, two times as five, that's fine. Try all kinds of things. Here's one again. That 
was two times of one, two times of five. I hope that makes sense. And I tried to play just really simple pentatonic to show the one, and then something a little more busier for the five. I'll do it one more time. This is the one chord. And then getting back to the one, right? So that busier stuff was me playing on the five, but I also was really playing specifically dominant seven, added a flat nine. You don't need to know any of that stuff. The basic principle is however you play over a D chord, however you play over an A7 chord, you can be very, very malleable with this instead of feeling like when you see a progression like this, it has to be this thing of like, and now I'm on D, and now I'm on B minor, and now I'm on E minor, and now I'm on A7. And don't get me wrong, I think being able to do that is is the secret to letting go and feeling great about it. Otherwise, we feel like we're faking it, right? And we can still make great music with if all you play is the blue scale over this, you'll make great music still. But you probably, if just depending on how deep you want to go, what your texture is, what your vibe is, what your aesthetic that you want to go for. For me, I want to have full control over nailing those chord changes perfectly and then just getting weird and letting go and going, you know, big, kind of big zoom out picture of it. So the last step I had in mind is to do some tension on purpose that just really sounds even bad to you to embolden yourself. And then land because now you know where you are. You did all those steps and let this be a huge long process, but you did all those steps. So you know where you are, even when we're playing weird stuff. Don't ever not know where you are. So I can jump back to, a, you know, target back to a chord tone, uh, even just the tonic of that main chord to feel like it got back to a nice place. I got pretty out and I wasn't happy with it. And that's exactly the point to embolden yourself, to say, what's the worst that could happen? Once you do that, what's the, don't, don't treat it preciously. See how like that can come across as being really purposeful, even if it's kind of wax seeming in the moment. by being able to play in in a simple way. And, you know, it's just practice. It's just practice. And then when the true kind of end of making music is no one needs, no one should be able to tell you what that is. I can't tell you what that is. But for me, it's doing all the heavy lifting and then trying to tap into something tasty. being able to have places to go with it because I did all the heavy lifting and being able to always know where I am and target things in a detailed way or not because I did the heavy lifting, right? So I hope you found that helpful. If so, hit the thumbs up for me. And if you want a resource that is very, very important for this process, because like I said, that be all end all exercise is outlining chord tones. Even if we don't want to sound like we're outlining chord tones, I, I swear, because I've been through it, that it's the thing that finally allowed me to know where I am and to know how to get back into the pocket, if you will, anytime I want to. 
And then that made me feel very confident about staying outside of it if and when I want to. So the chord tone practice, plus it just sounds good and it's fun. I mean, I love practicing that stuff and just trying to, to dial it in. So if you want a resource that has every single chord tone you need for any jazz progression, I have a chord tone vocabulary pack, all the arpeggio shapes, very easy to use and practice with. You can get that totally for free as a PDF with the link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones. It's every arpeggio shape you need to improvise over any jazz chord that comes up. Another kind of secret sauce item for this whole process here is phrasing. Check out my phrasing playlist that has some really, really good lessons and exercises for how to get your phrasing sounding lyrical. I'll put a link to that on the screen here if you're watching on YouTube, or you can go to it with the link in the description. I post a new lesson video every week. Next week, I'm gonna have a lesson on a cool way to write out melodies that is doesn't require being able to read or write sheet music at all. I think it's really neat. I've been using it for a long time. Hope to see you in that lesson. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing. Thank you.